What's going on everybody? It is your man Cleveland Terry and today we are going to be reviewing the Reloop Elite Mixer. Now this has been probably the most requested mixer to be reviewed. Not only because it's a great mixer, but because people are trying to compare it to the S9 and the Rain 70. Maybe they're on the fence about which one to buy. So this kind of hits on that top three. Not to mention, they all kind of operate in the same price point. Although, the Reloop Elite still is the lowest of the three. Now I struggled with this request because I really wanted to give this mixer a fair shake. But it's hard without a point of reference, and those references are, of course, the Pioneer S9 and the Rain 70 and 72. So the question is, does this mixer stand on its own? Well, the quick answer is yes, but it's the long answer that may be the issue for some people. Let's talk about it. All right, so let's take a look at this thing. The mixer itself, about the same size as the Rain 70 and Rain 72, and it weighs about the same amount. The S9 seems to be the lightest mixer on the planet because every other mixer I've touched has been tanks. This one is no different. As we always do, let's start with the back. On the back of the mixer, we see two USB connections. Of course, this is for being able to switch out multiple DJs on one mixer. That is pretty much a standard today. It's a standard on this too. Drop down below, something that isn't a standard on most mixers is the five volt USB smart hub. Now, what's special about these is, as of today, I haven't seen any USB ports on any mixers that operate at a five volt level. Most of them, including your range 70 and 72, operate on a two and a half volt. So, what that means is, if it's a two and a half volt, it'll charge your iPhone, your Android device, and a thumb drive. But if you try to plug in maybe an external hard drive, it might not provide enough power to turn that on. It is a smart hub. You plug in any device in there and it will show up on your computer. I found that very useful having that additional hub. Moving over to probably the most glaring omission on this device is the lack of combo jack for the microphone input. That's right, there was only a quarter inch input on the mixer. At a price point that this mixer comes in at, a combo jack is pretty much needed. Next up, we have our RCA inputs. And fortunately, there is a dedicated phono and a dedicated line input, which means that you can run both your phases and your vinyl on different channels without having to unplug anything. One thing to mention, however, is the placement of the ground leads. On first viewing, they look like there's a lot of space, but the moment you start adding in a number of RCAs, that slowly becomes a difficult situation to get into. And I struggled on occasion to try to get my grounds in without pulling out the other quartz. On other mixers, there seems to be more of a focus on the ground leads where they would place them above the RCAs, giving them more room and easier time to connect them. Underneath them, you have your standard quarter inch booth outputs and moving right over to the left, you have your standard XLR outputs on the main output. Right above that, you have your auxiliary in and out. Now, one little caveat to the auxiliary out is, there is no volume knob to control the output of your auxiliary output. Reloop has decided to send a consistent line level feed that is separate from the main controls out of that port. For the most part, that's actually really, really good having a nice clean signal going out. However, I found if you try to output that to a device, for instance, my A10 Mini Pro that I do all my streaming with, you won't be able to use it because the output is so strong that I can't bring the A10 Mini Pro volume down low enough to get a clean signal. If you're doing it on a prosumer level, like you're sending it to a mixer and then they can control the gains, different story. Every mixer that I've had has always had a output adjustment. So it's a little disappointing that this one didn't include one. All right, let's turn this around and let's take a look at the front panel. All right, on the front panel, we have all the knobs. Now, you know I'm not a fan of having all the controls in the front. I would rather have them on top, 
but there's a lot of good features on the front of this panel, starting with the microphone. Even though it is a single microphone, there is an EQ, a high and low. If you don't find that you're getting the exact amount of adjustments, you can adjust the additional settings in the control panel. I don't mind the dip switch style off, on, and talk over. It's a little hard to get to. I would have rather had that to be extended a little bit for easier touch, but at least this way, everything's out of the way and it's harder to accidentally switch it to the wrong setting. I do wish that this setting was higher up on the panel. It's super low and you have to kind of dig your hands all the way to the bottom in order to get to it. Again, in a dark setting, that's gonna be much harder to figure out. Move over to the middle and this is where we have all of our crossfader and line adjustments. Sampler, volume knob, auxiliary input, volume knob to have your headphones with split cue and standard quarter inch and mini jack inputs. Let's move over to the face and there's a lot to take in on this mixer. So we are gonna go from the bottom up. Now without going any further, I'm gonna tell you right now, the star of the show are these faders. The mini InnoFader Pros are some of the best faders that I have used. I am super, super impressed with these faders. I honestly hadn't used these faders until I received this mixer and boy, I am very, very impressed. The faders are smooth, they're responsive. The crossfader is super buttery smooth. Now, this particular crossfader, there is no tension adjustment on this crossfader. So the, the feel that you get, there's no adjusting this. If somebody were to tell me that this was the only crossfader I was gonna have, I would be completely okay for the future. That's how good these crossfaders are. I will say this though, every so often, not a lot, but enough for me to think about it. I did get some occasional bleed from the fader when they were in closed position. Now it wasn't enough for me to go, okay, there's something wrong, let me make some adjustments in the system, but it was enough for me to say, ah, I used to get that bleed when I used to use my old Rain 57. That was notorious for bleeds. So I'm sure that if we open up the panel, you can adjust and make it better. But you know, from me just receiving the mixer, I did get an occasional bleed. Unlike some of the other mixers out there, Reloop has decided to place the performance mode pads underneath the main pads. Now, while in theory, this is good, because of the size of the fantastically oversized pads, you then get a little bit of push up into your tweak effects and your loop roll. And I can't tell you how many times as I was messing with the tweak effects, I found myself hitting this particular pad right here, or this particular pad, because they are extremely close together. Speaking of the pads, the pads are excellent. You're not going to miss any cue points with the size of these pads. And to be honest with you, they feel a lot like MPC style pads. They are super responsive and a joy to use. Moving up past the pads, we have our tweak effects and any mixer at this price point has some form of internal effects in standalone mode. This one has internal effects too, sort of. While you still have access to your standard filter, you also receive pit crush, flanger, white noise, and a custom setting. Now, noticeably absent is an echo. This is a Serato mixer through and through. It is designed for Serato. It works best when used with Serato. It is Serato to the core. So if you're looking for something that you wanna play your records on, or maybe you wanna run your CDJs through, you're, you're gonna be limited in the effects that you can run outside of Serato. Now, if you're using Serato, then all of the effects become available to you. You have your standard Serato effects, and of course, it is only limited to the amount of effects that you yourself own. One of the things that I found out, which was very, very cool, was that if Serato's plugged in and Serato is up, you have access to all of these effects on your external inputs. So if you're rocking vinyl and you wanna throw an echo, it'll actually do an effect send through the mixer back out and you will actually be able to use an echo. So you can use this from a hybrid system perspective, meaning you're using Serato and you're throwing in some vinyl, you have access to all of your effects. If you're only using vinyl, effects go out the window. As a matter of fact, when it's not plugged in, this is what you see on the control, Connect SDJ Pro. Like I said, Serato mixer through and through. 
What I do like about the tweak effects is that there is a nice visual cue for whatever effect you're on. The filter effect standard is red. You flip to the bit crush and it's blue. Flip to the flanger, it's yellow. White noise is white. Custom is green. Just by looking at your color code, you know exactly what you're in. Again, this is a kind of feature that is intuitive and should be passed around to all of the other mixers out there. Other manufacturers, take note. Let's move over to the Serato effects for a minute here. Over to both your left and the right side of your mixer, you have your Serato effects. Anything you set up in your Serato effects are gonna be here labeled one, two, and three. Now, even though there's only two letters here, it does correspond to the button. One, two, and three, echo, delay, reverb. So it gives you this quick notification to let you know where you are. It's simple to use. You hit the button activated, then you can either turn it on, which means that it will stay on the entire time, or you can press the hold button, which is a temporary effect as long as you are holding the button. As soon as you release it, effect goes away. I do like the level depth fader here. This is, this is different from a lot of the other ones. Most of them use a knob. I do like this. It allows for really cool sweeping effect as you're using the effects. The knob for the effects parameters, super big, super easy. There's a noticeable click on every switch over and it's a great effects module here. If this were set up exactly the same way on the other side, I would not have any issues with the effects module. However, they opted to go with a mirrored setup. What does that mean? That means that if you are using the effects and you have your on button here and your hold button here on the exact other side, you now have your hold button and your on button. Now, this can be very confusing and I can't tell you how many times I press the hold button only to go back to my mix and realize as I hear the echo playing out of the new transition that I pressed the on button. I'm not a fan of the mirrored layouts. I think it needs to remain the same on both sides. That's just not the way at least my brain thinks. I mean, to be honest with you, have they just kept the buttons the same? I don't care about the depth knob and this because we know what these are. These are two independent knobs, so it makes sense you know exactly what they're gonna be. But these are exactly the same. I wanna stop here for a moment and talk about the lack of paddles that this particular mixer has. Now, this mixer came out in 2019. Now, it came out at NAMM, I remember seeing it, and I remember thinking, wow, that's a beautiful looking mixer. However, the Pioneer S9 had already come out and it had included effects paddles. For whatever reason, Reloop decided they didn't want paddles on their mixer, and that's okay. A lot of people know that I really love paddles. I think paddles work for a specific type of DJ. And a lot of scratch DJs and turntablists connect more with the effects paddles. I think if you're an EDM guy or a house guy, you're probably going to like the fader a little more. And a lot of house guys and EDM guys don't even use a cross fader. They only use the up fader. So in my mind, I think this was a conscious decision to go with this to make it a little more universal. Would I have liked to have paddles on here? Yes. Does it affect my ability to use the mixer? No, the mirrored affects my ability a lot more than paddles would. So I don't have a problem in 2019 and or 20 that this doesn't have paddles. Okay, let's move on. Down below the effects unit, you have your loop knob. I do like how there's, again, a visual cue point to let you know where you are in your loop point, limiting the amount of time you have to stare at your Serato. Great job on this piece. As far as your channel strip is concerned, they do a great job. They all have 12 o'clock center clicks to make it really easy to know where dead center is. I don't really have any issue with the frequency response when you do make the changes over. They don't have full EQ kill, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Let's talk about the center channel here because this is probably the busiest part of the entire mixer. And I think we need to spend a little time on it. Now you have your dip switch style source control, makes it super easy to switch through, but also makes it difficult to change over on accident. You have your master volume knob, right underneath it you have your booth knob with the ability to switch your booth from stereo to mono right at the touch. Then you have your sampler effects. Yes, you can route your sampler effects independently without running them through one of the channels. So that is fantastic. Drop down below, you have your browse features and your browse, again, knob is perfect. 
and you have your load left and right. If you double click, it goes into instant double. Now, right underneath that, you have your headphone adjustments and your Q fader. Now, I am not a big fan of it being up here. I do like the browse feature. I've never liked where a lot of the other companies put their load knobs all the way up at the top here. That's never been a good thing for me. I do like it here ergonomically. It's easier to reach and it just feels perfect exactly where it is. I think these controls should have gone somewhere else, like maybe in the huge space we have here, they could have placed somewhere here or here. Because when you're actually using the mixer, you find yourself getting a little lost in all of the positions because, at least in my opinion, everything is perfect, okay? I mean, the mixer is aesthetically perfect from all the way through, lines, everything matches perfectly. There is nothing asymmetrical about this mixer. So everything kind of just squeezes in together and becomes all one big thing. It's beautifully laid out. And that's the first thing that everybody says when they see this mixer, oh my God, it's gorgeous. And they're right, it is gorgeous. But a couple of things here and there moved out of place, I think could have gone a long way for the usability of this mixer. For instance, this. I would have put this over here, that way I could slide this down a little bit, give a little space, a little breathing room in the control panel so it didn't seem so busy. And last but not least, I do need to talk about turntables and if you are using real vinyl. Now I was doing a test with these and keep in mind, there's a lot of people that don't like the sound that comes out of the PLXs as far as vinyl is concerned. Not really the issue here. What I noticed was the audio feed for the vinyl was considerably lower than the audio feed in my Serato. And no matter how much I tried to adjust up, and I'm talking, I'm moving the pots to full blast, they never got anywhere close to the levels. Now, at first I thought maybe it was just the turntables and they just output low, but I wanted to make sure. So I put my Rain 70 on, plugged them in, and sure enough, they were noticeably low. Here's the difference. In the Rain settings, you have a vinyl deck adjustment where you can actually increase the gain internally for vinyl, specifically for vinyl. So the volume that was super low became usable matching my Serato. I wanted to make sure before I said anything, I went into the manual. By the way, I do want to say uh, it's incredibly refreshing when you open up a manual and English isn't the first option. Like I gotta go through a whole bunch of pages to get to English. Like that's refreshing to me and it's important. It's a German manufacturer. Of course, German's gonna be first. But within the settings, there was no additional setting for vinyl. Now, I think I wanna talk about this for just a minute because I think that it doesn't feel like this mixer was really focused or dedicated on vinyl turntables. It could be the low volume on the vinyl RCAs, or it could be the rather tight position of the ground leads. Just kind of leads me to believe that vinyl wasn't as important. And look, there's nothing wrong with that. Vinyl lovers are be going the way of the dinosaur. Now, yes, before you guys say, what are you talking about? It sells more than ever. I understand that, but I'm just saying from a DJ perspective, selling a product, it's not really who you're selling the elite to. I mean, this is a controller DVS setup here. So I do want to point that out, but I, I just want to make it clear that it's a great mixer. If you use this mixer or own this mixer, you are going to really, really enjoy this mixer. But there's also this type of rigidness that I find in their settings. It's almost as if they understood that when producing this, that the way they produced it was perfect. So you're not gonna to need to make adjustments because it's perfect. We send a line level out because the line level is perfect. There's never gonna be a scenario where you need to adjust on the fly or the vinyl output is fine. There's no issue with that. Yes, we could put in the software an ability to ingest the internal gain, but it works just fine. So there's this rigidness to the mixer that just kind of forced me to do a little bit of a workaround that I don't necessarily need to do with other mixers. You've broken down all of these things and you've had your bad points, you've had your good points. How is it to DJ with? And I'm gonna tell you, 
It's a good mixer to DJ with. Honestly, I had a lot of fun with this mixer. And the more you use it, the more you understand the thought process and how they designed this mixer, the easier it becomes and then you don't really run into a lot of issues. Now, ergonomically, I still ran into the fact that I would hit this button right here when I was working with the tweaks or I would press the wrong on button when I thought it was a hold button. That didn't change every single time I DJed. It always remained the same. So that was a little frustrating to me, but the innovators, oh man, these are so great. And as I went back to my Rain 70, the Mac 4 faders are really, really good. These are just as good, just as good. And in some ways, smoother, to be honest with you. So I'm really, really impressed by these faders. I absolutely love the pads. I love the responsiveness of them. And everything about the mixer, barring a few minor things, were great on the mixer. Would I recommend this mixer? Yes, I would recommend this mixer, especially for the price point. The price point makes it a super, super enticing mixer. All right, guys, that's it for my review. If you found what I said here useful, hit that like button. If you found what I said here really useful, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow me on the Instagrams and Twitters. Always a pleasure. Follow and talk to you later. We'll talk soon. Peace. Side note, does it stream well? Yes and no, because of where the audio channels are on this device, you have to stream using 7.1 audio. 5.1 works too, but they recommend 7.1 audio. I found that using 7.1 audio, I ran into a lot of glitches with people saying, I can't hear you. What happened to the sound? It's going in and out, it's not working for me. So I had to change over to mono output and the mono output just didn't sound as good. So it does work for streaming. It does work for 7.1, but I would almost recommend going out of the XLRs and going into another sound card just for more control. Okay, I think that's it. All right, I think that's it.